Welcome to Talk Tennis and welcome to your 2022 Sports Warehouse Holiday Gift Guide. This is one of my favorite episodes to record every year because I get to introduce you guys to some of my friends here at Sports Warehouse. If you are new to the podcast or new to Tennis Warehouse or just don't know a whole lot about us, fun fact, Tennis Warehouse was the first of many warehouse companies. Um, We actually celebrated our 30th anniversary this year. Definitely go check out YouTube and our website for some of the fun content that we had around that. But we have several sister companies that are also just as passionate about their sports as we are about tennis. So today we're going to talk to some of my colleagues from... Total Pickleball, Running Warehouse, Riding Warehouse, and Tackle Warehouse. And they are all members of each of those companies, and their company runs just like Tennis Warehouse. So I've said this in last year's episode, but all that great content that you see at tennis, you can expect it in those other categories, whether you're looking for more pickleball content, or you're a fisherman looking for fishing content, or you're a runner looking to make sure you buy the best running shoe, or if you're into the equestrian world. So we've got you covered on all of those bases. And today I'm just going to ask them about some of their favorite items some of the trends that they've seen go this year and all of that. Um, Before we get into that part of the podcast, I'll just give you a little bit of background from the tennis world. So as you guys probably know, 2022 was an interesting year where we started with not a whole lot of inventory. We were struggling, especially with shoes from certain brands. It was rough. It was rough for a minute. Um, There were certain brands that like just couldn't get the inventory on time and it was months behind before we did. However, I'm happy to report we seem to be on the other side of that. And for the holiday season, we have lots of inventory, whether it's rackets, shoes, tennis balls, apparel, accessories and beyond. So this year, it is definitely going to be a bit easier to find some amazing deals and get everything you could possibly want for the tennis player in your life. And if that means you're shopping for yourself, no problem. That's awesome. For me, if I see something on a sale or a great deal, and it's something I love, of course, I stock up. So specifically in shoes, I remember last year was rough. Um, It was tough to stock up on shoes. We were recommending trying different shoes, and maybe now you have a new favorite shoe. But if you see a sale, definitely stock up. It's the time to do so. So before I get into specific specific products that I love this year and I think might make great gifts for the tennis player, let's talk a little bit about some trends that we've seen in the industry. Um, I think finally tennis has seen a lot more sustainability in the apparel side of things. So we're seeing recycled materials used more often. And Adidas comes to mind. Nike comes to mind. Adidas has their parlay line. Some great pieces. We're also seeing oh, still some of that vintage vibe, which, you know, I'm a child of the 80s, so I love seeing that retro. It's kind of like what I grew up with tennis uh, on on the court again. It's really fun. We're, we're seeing that a lot. So definitely still more vintage. On the women's side, we're seeing some higher waisted bottoms, whether it's a skirt or leggings, but we're seeing those tops also get a little bit shorter, so a little bit more cropped um, and also some layered pieces. So that's fun. UV protection is always important. On the men's side, we're seeing those shorts get a little shorter um, and then still uh, lots of vintage, vintage, retro, some really classic looks you can't go wrong with. Uh, Those will last forever. What else? Um, Roger Federer retired this year, (laughs) in case you missed it. Uh, I don't know how. I think we all cried at least a few tears uh, that day, his last match. But we have some really cool RF items. If you are an RF fan or you have an RF fan in your life, that unique low RF hat comes in a variety of colors and is always a good option. I wear mine at least once a week. You cannot go wrong. Plus, we have some Wilson RF DNA bags, that great 12-pack, um, that classic red bag with the RF signature. Such a good item. This year, we've also seen some new rackets come into 
the racket world. So even like the boom MP or the boom line of rackets, um, this is a new franchise from Head, and we're seeing it endorsed by Coco Goff. And it really kind of bridges the gap between too much power and too much control. It's it's very user friendly, very explosive, maneuverable, and such a good option. Uh, I personally also love the Coco Golf line of bags that match it perfectly. So they're black and teal, and just really fun. Um, I, someone I see once a week on the courts carries it. She's like 12 years old, has her Coco Golf bag and her head racket. So those are awesome items. And then we still have some amazing price point value rackets if you're looking to get someone into the sport of tennis. So rackets that come in under $100, great to gift to someone just starting the sport, and then they can progress from there. Tons of apparel options. Athleisure has been a big trend this year. So we did just start carrying Viore, which I'm sure you guys have heard of, but it's a very like cool, trendy um, apparel line. And you can wear it on the court. You can wear it off the court. It just looks cool, period. <laughs> um, so we're seeing a lot of that. Uh, we have another new brand called Ace the Moon. I'm obsessed with their trucker hats, but just really fun graphic kind of looks to kind of just add a little flair and style to your game. Stocking stuffers, if you're looking for some great price point items, grips and dampeners, as well as string, is always a good gift for the tennis player in your life. Cannot say enough about that. It's kind of like one of those things that you forget. They're so easy to add on. Um, outerwear is always super fun. I'll give a shout out to the Tennis Warehouse collection of items. We've added a few new pieces this year. If you have a chance, you might be able to get your hands on some of the anniversary items from the Tennis Warehouse anniversary sale. Um, that was a fun little retro throwback collection of tees that we did. You'll recognize the logos probably. There's one called the Universal T and the hat kind of looks like the old MTV logo. So just super fun play on, you know, that retro nostalgia vibe. Um, what else? 2023 is just around the corner. We're so excited for the Australian Open. Um, I think we're going to continue to see on-time deliveries, good inventory, and some new items are coming. As someone that is obsessed with footwear, I am very excited for 2023. You guys get ready. I think you will not be disappointed by tennis shoes. They're continuing to become the best of all worlds, whether it's like light, cushioned, speedy, stable. There, there, so many brands are coming out with so many great shoes, and I'm so excited to see how you guys react to them because based on what I've seen, there's literally something from every company that's going to be awesome. So stay tuned for that. Um, what else? You guys know where you can shop with us. We have our 12 days of savings. You'll want to tune in every day for each deal. That starts on December 1st. Sign up for a mailing list. That's such a great way to keep up. I know when I check my emails in the morning and I see a sale item email come through on a company that I love, I am instantly like, ooh, let's, let's shop. Um, so that's always an easy reminder, too. Gift cards are always such a good option. Even if you buy a handful of $25 gift cards to Tennis Warehouse and you don't give them all out, you know, you can use that. Um, and... I think that's about it. We're super excited for 2023, and we would love to continue to hear from you guys on what you would like to keep hearing from us. So whether it's uh, specific episodes or if you want to deep dive into a special topic or you want a certain guest, please feel free to email us at podcast at tennis-warehouse.com. And be sure to check out our holiday gift guide. Oh, that's one thing I was going to mention before I go. We just launched our exclusive color of the ASICS Gel Resolution 8. So if you remember 10 years ago, we had these really fun, bright, on the women's side, it was yellow, purple, pink, and teal. 
that was like the first shoe when I first started working at Tennis Warehouse, and I love it, and I still have my pair. So we kind of played around with the colors, made them better for 2022, 2023. They're a little brighter, flashier. Um, those are on our website, definitely on my wish list. So <laughs> something that I'm looking forward to hopefully getting this year. And one more quick thing is we have a bunch of novelty items. This is the second year in a row we're carrying a lot of fun novelty items, whether it's coasters, coffee mugs, wine openers, beer openers, hair stuff for the ladies, bracelets, so much fun stuff, and it's not going to break the bank. So also some great little stocking stuffers in that category. Okay, enough from me. Let's go talk to our friends at the other companies. We'll hear from Total Pickleball, Running Warehouse, Riding Warehouse, and Tackle Warehouse. Welcoming Total Pickleball to the Talk Tennis Sports Warehouse Gift Guide episode. Howard, thanks for joining me today. Yep, thank you for having me. And Howard, maybe you can introduce yourself because you're not just on our pickleball side of things. You also are on the tennis side of things. And maybe some of our listeners and watchers have seen you in a review or two. So mm -hmm. tell me what your job role is at Sports Warehouse and how long you've been with the company and what's something like what's like the stuff that you're in mm -hmm. charge of. Yeah, so um, I've been with Sports Warehouse for about three years now. Um, have pretty much done about everything <laughs> uh, up to this point. Um, I started off uh, in returns. Uh, so I was part of the returns department. Uh, that was definitely a fun experience. Um, and then maybe a year into that, uh, they're like, you know, we need someone in customer service. So I was like, hands up. <laughs> Let me go ahead and give that, a, you know, give that a shot. You know, I've never done customer service work uh, over the phone. So I was like, you know, perfect opportunity uh, to test, you know, new skill sets. Uh, so went in there, um, was maybe on the phones, uh, the regular lines for maybe about three months around there. And then, uh, you know, I really wanted to be a product specialist since, you know, tennis is definitely my passion. Uh, I've always been someone that's super like, you know, nerdy, like, a little geek with uh, when it comes <laughs> with techie, uh, racket stuff, strings, equipment. So, you know, that definitely made it a perfect environment for me to go into the product specialist department. Um, after that, just became the lead for the Atlanta location. Um, so, and then here recently, uh, joined the web editing team uh, and play testing a uh, crew for tennis and pickleball. Nice. Okay, so we can hear that you love tennis, and I already knew that about you. But I also, I didn't get the chance to play pickleball with you when you were in slow. Mm -hmm. But I've heard that you are a fierce competitor. How did pickleball start for you? How long have you been playing? Yeah, so pickleball, I've been playing for about a year and a half now. Okay. Um, it started off with, you know, slowly uh, surrounding areas started converting tennis courts into pickleball courts. Um, and I was like, I kind of, you know, started off with the, the same feeling most tennis players that transition over to pickleball start feeling at the beginning. It's like, why are they taking away our <laughs> tennis courts? <laughs> why are they transitioning them over to pickleball courts um, at first? I wasn't looking forward to like falling in love or anything with like that with pickleball, but picked up a paddle uh, about a year and a half ago. Um, and it was like love at first sight. <laughs> I've always been a pretty talented tennis player, but I quickly found um, myself being a lot better at pickleball. Okay, <laughs> so okay. that's always an, up, that's <laughs> always an upside <laughs> for anything is uh, being able to, you know, pick up a sport and be like, man, I'm actually really, really good at this. <laughs> Uh, you know, just simple things like for tennis, at least for me, um, going for like a tweener in between the legs. I never try that just because it's been fail, 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 right. hitting my kneecaps, <laughs> hitting everything. Um, but pickleball, it's like flawless. Like, I don't think about it. It's just oh. natural for me. So it, it became more of a natural sport for me. Um, so super excited, super happy. Uh, I picked up pickleball. Definitely. Uh, right now, pickleball is definitely number one for me. Uh, tennis has fallen down to number two, but I still love both sports, uh, but definitely uh, pickleball. I feel like the community is just a lot more giving. Um, you know, you show up to a park, uh, you know, general park, and there's people playing tennis. You can't always, you know, vibe with the four O's uh, with like a beginner or like a four five with mm -hmm. maybe a three five. There's always going to be that huge difference uh, between skill sets. But with pickleball, it's like 
you have somebody that's in their fifties that might be a three zero a three five, um, and you have someone that's like a four five and maybe in their twenties. And in a doubles match, anything can happen. Yeah. <laughs> that better players could end up losing. Uh, it's just a lot better vibes, a lot more social, a lot more welcoming. Uh, with the countless amount of parks <laughs> around my surrounding area, I could always just jump onto a court and just meet new people. Uh, just yesterday, I went to a new park. Everyone was super welcoming and ended up playing for about four or five hours wow. <laughs> until, the sun, until the sun went down because sadly that park doesn't have any uh, lights yet <laughs> for the okay. pickleball courts. Uh, so at that point, everyone just vibes and chill uh, there until the sun goes down and then it's uh hey uh, I guess we're hungry let's go, let's go grab some food <laughs> <Yeah>. to eat <laughs> oh that's awesome I love that okay that's really fun maybe I need to be more social with my pickleball plane uh- <laughs> yeah. or or uh, you could come visit um Atlanta yeah and, uh, be more than happy to show you around the pickleball community over here and the tennis community as well it's probably heard millions of times it's just huge over here in Atlanta. I know. I'm so jealous of Ulta. I'm not going to lie. And like Jofi's <laughs> always posting her team pictures and team stuff. And I'm like, oh, I wish we had yes. that in slow, but we don't. So I live yes. vicariously through your guys's um, team camaraderie and like so many players mm-hmm. of tennis and pickleball. And that kind of leads me into the next thing is pickleball is obviously here to stay. You know, a couple years ago, maybe people were like, oh, we'll see. We'll see. But more pickleball courts are coming, whether they're making new facilities or whatnot. Um, what sort of trends have you seen in pickleball this year? Is there anything new in terms of gear or anything? The great thing about pickleball right now is everything's new. Everything's yeah. exciting. <laughs> um, you you know, look into next month and you're like, whoa, <laughs> that's coming out. You know, this year, a uh, big thing with like at least paddle technologies. Uh, I have two examples here to show real quick. Um, you have Selkirk, who came out with the uh, power air paddles, which wow. has this unique cutout over here at the throat, which helps it with the uh, air dynamics and flexibility of the paddle, which is something you wouldn't have imagined maybe a year ago is a manufacturer coming out with this type of technology. So super exciting. This just came out. Um, got a chance to play test uh, that paddle. Uh, definitely, if you want a paddle with a lot of spin, <laughs> that's definitely that's definitely one of the top ones out there. Nice. And then Pro Canics just came out with a um, the Pro Spin paddle. Okay. And what's so unique about this one is they actually have uh, strings under the hitting surface. So wow. try and mimic a little bit from tennis. Uh, you know, have have a little bit more of a groove to help that ball kind of bite and pocket a little bit better. So this one's nice. another one, awesome for spin. Um, amazing. Um, you, you know, you never know now. <laughs> you see all these manufacturers not sticking to just one thing, which, uh, you know, with sports, maybe I feel like tennis and, you know, I'm huge in the soccer background as well. Um, I feel like it seems like every year is about the same, just maybe adding a little bit more technology here and there. But super exciting seeing a sport like pickleball just come out with new items, you know, new technologies that actually make sense. And it's exciting to see how the sports can develop within the next one or two years. Yeah, for sure. Um, there was a paddle. I haven't hit with it, but like as a tennis player, you always hear the players say, "Like I want a racket that's controlled, powerful, mm-hmm. spin friendly." But there's a paddle in the market that like one side's control, one side's power, right? Like how does that even work? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. That's a paddle from One Shot. Okay. Um, I did hit with that one. wasn't huge fan, but it's solid paddle. My issue. It's my personal issues. I have the tendency from tennis of like flipping, Twirling. you know, yeah. <laughs> the racket Me too. around. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> so I found myself on the wrong side. I'm like, <laughs> oh, was it was it me or was it the paddle that was, uh, you know, changing how far the depth of the ball and everything? Um, so uh, again, another innovation uh, this year. Um, super amazing, just to see like even for the simplest things that uh, paddle manufacturers are doing. It's just great to see that everyone's looking to innovate. Everyone's looking to really, um, you know, try to get an upper hand against competitors, uh, which is really pushing just everything in general, just like making the whole sport better, making the product better. 
Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Cool. Um, what are some sale items that we should have and keep an eye out for or some splurge items as well? I mean, I know in a lot of the other warehouses, there's a bit more inventory this year. But like, as you've mentioned, Pickleball is still relatively new. So it's not like they have stuff from a long time ago to like offload. So uh, what kind of sales should we be keeping an eye out for? Um, I don't have any information that I can say. Uh, That's okay. <laughs> you know, I know. Today. We got to be pre- guide um, or... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I would just recommend uh, check out our website, I'd say, like every week, uh, beginning midweek, uh, to see any specials that come up. Um, but I do want to highlight three paddles um, that are at an excellent price point uh, for anybody looking to get into pickleball and maybe wants to get a little bit better at pickleball or even that advanced player because uh, I consider myself an advanced player and I end up just falling in love with one of these paddles. Oh, yeah. So that's my us. paddle of choice for uh, 2023 for my right. uh, tournament, uh, for my season coming up. Um, so I want to start off with Head. Um, Head has the gravity line. Okay. So awesome paddle. Um, expands the overall sweet spot. So if you struggle with like dinking, uh, this will definitely help you uh, overall. Um, it's priced at ninety nine ninety five um, at this moment. Um, awesome paddle. It's available in different uh, handle lengths. There's a short handle, a long handle, uh, and then there's a light, and then there's a regular weighted one as well. So a good variety of different styles uh, depending on your personal preference. But solid paddle, uh, especially if you want something with a large sweet spot um, and just making it a little bit more forgiving for you at the kitchen line. Nice. Um, and then I do want to mention another head one, which is the head extreme line. Again, uh, awesome price, $89 uh, with 95 cents. Um, this one right here, if you're looking to generate a little bit more spin in your game. Super amazing paddle. Um, I started, when I started off uh, playing pickleball, I definitely picked up one of these extreme paddles because transitioning over from tennis, you fall in love with a brand that you recognize. So this one was amazing for me at the beginning. Uh, definitely helped me uh, understand uh, spin potential for pickleball. Uh, so I always recommend this one for anyone starting out in pickleball or maybe someone that's struggling a little bit uh, to generate some top spin or uh, underspin in their game. Solid option. And this one comes in like the different weight classes. So there's the tour, tour max, and then there's the light as well. Okay. So amazing. Uh, and again, under $100. So nice. you're uh, getting a good bang for your buck. Uh, and then the one that I've just been uh, hitting um, and I just automatically fell in love with both of them. It was a hard decision to try, kind of try to figure out exactly which one I was going to gravitate towards a little bit more. But I have finally made my decision. Um, so we have the Exelon Inferno paddles. We have a 13 millimeter and a 16 millimeter paddle. Uh, I ended up falling in love a little bit more with the uh, 60 millimeter. Okay. So it's priced at $119 with 95 cents. Um, at that price, it's an amazing paddle. Um, mm-hmm. I get a good blend of power and control. Um, amazing touch with it. Um, it does have EVA foam in the handle, so it does absorb some of that shock mm-hmm. as well. So that's something most players don't really worry about is uh, vibration dampening in the pickleball <laughs> world. But uh, me getting older, my body is starting to <laughs> slowly uh, fall apart here and there. So I'm like, you know, I have to find something that will help me stay playing pickleball a little bit longer. And probably, hopefully I could play pickleball into my eighties. That's the yeah. goal. <laughs> well, if you're playing uh, those four to five hour sessions, I mean, hey. Hey. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> but an amazing paddle. I would definitely check this out, especially for that uh, intermediate to advanced player, but a beginner can start with this paddle as well. Um, I have played with this paddle for about two weeks now as my paddle of choice. And I played, um, a tournament, um, and I went undefeated, uh, six straight matches undefeated Woo. with my partner. Uh, so I haven't lost yet with this oh, battle. So, <laughs> so, if that's not that a ex- selling point. <laughs> ex- exactly. If that's not a selling point, uh, you know, I definitely recommend 100% to give this uh, paddle a try. Uh, we do offer our demo program. So I always highly recommend a demo, any paddle, uh, before you purchase one. Um, but amazing paddles, uh, 
both the echelons and then the two uh, head paddles as well. Um, yeah. And we'll link all of that in the show notes. So it'll be easy to find and everything. Um, because those sound like awesome paddles. I have I'm gonna have to try that Ectalon. It like actually makes me wanna like get out there today. I'm like, who wants to play pickleball? Hey, <laughs> sounds uh, like a great. I, I wish I had the liberty to uh fly over there and uh, get a hidden <laughs> session with you. <laughs> right? I know. <laughs> um that was a quick thing, and I know you guys ha- are starting to build so much content over on Total Pickleball mm-hmm. on the YouTube channel and all that. But real quick, because this was something that blew my mind when playing pickleball is the difference from tennis rackets to pickleball paddles is the thicker the beam in tennis is usually like more power oriented but in pickleball it's the yeah. opposite it's crazy <laughs> yes definitely uh so you know <laughs> as i had mentioned i was in the product specialist uh, team here in atlanta before becoming a play tester when i first dove into pickleball, uh, try and learn all the technology, everything. That's probably the number one thing that just blew my mind. I was right? like, wait, my, my mind wants to say, follow what tennis does. 100%. But yes, uh, yes, you're a hundred percent right. Uh, you know, uh, thicker is going to be lower power, uh, more forgiving, uh, thinner is going to be more power. Uh, and you're going to feel a little bit more of that, uh, overall impact, uh, from the paddle. So, as far as what should someone start with, uh, I highly recommend, you know, again, demo program. I highly recommend getting, if there's one paddle that you really love, try both of them. Try the thinner one and try the thicker one because the difference is pretty often uh, pretty huge between the thicker and the thinner one. So I definitely recommend uh, kind of like fine tuning it a little bit more for you. No, that's great advice. Um, what else? Is there anything else that we should be aware of? Any new technology in balls or whatnot? I know there's like a lo- always something new. So with balls, um, within the last year, not really uh, any new technology. Um, one thing to keep in mind, uh, especially now that we're heading into winter, is um, balls, uh, at least uh, pickleballs, uh, will kind of start cracking a lot uh, sooner. Uh, than okay. in the summer or any other uh, temperature. So good, it's yeah. uh, a bit difficult uh, to, you know, to have a good ball that's going to survive the winter <laughs> a month. Um, but I do have one ball I want to highlight, um, and it's the Torna Strike Ball. Okay. So this ball is super affordable. Um, I love this ball um, just because it holds really well in winter. Um, and it works really well if you want to just, you know, practice by yourself and hit up against a wall. Um, it will uh, stay in shape and it won't crack uh, prematurely like uh, some some of the other balls. Uh, so I definitely recommend this one a little bit more for uh, winter play. Uh, if you're not 100 percent, you know, uh, you know, looking for like what's being used for tournaments. Uh, this one's used uh, very rarely for tournaments, but it's an awesome practice or just hidden session ball. Awesome. And what about footwear? I know we're starting to see more specific shoes for yes. pickleball. What are you wearing and what do you think are some of the best shoes out there right now? Yeah. So uh, this year, you know, being added to the play chess team, uh, finally been able to dive in uh, with pickleball specific shoes. Um, the ones that have stand, uh, stood out a little bit more for me have been the Skechers Viper Court. Mm, I've um, heard good things. Yes. Uh, they're priced at about $90. Um, an amazing shoe. Um, um, let me just start by saying, like, for me, uh, you know, being so addicted to pickleball, <laughs> yeah. I, leave, I, I, leave, I leave work and I try to find a court. Uh, so those shoes have actually, uh, they're in the back of my trunk every nice. single day. <laughs> um, and they're super comfortable, super cushiony, um, durability. Uh, the outsole durability is really well for it. Um, upper, at least for me, not the greatest just because I have that tendency of dragging my toes, dragging my whole foot. Mm-hmm, <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. But for most players that I've recommended that shoe for, it's held up for months for them. Um, but an amazing shoe, uh, K-Swiss. Uh, K-Swiss makes amazing shoes. They're launching uh, their Supreme uh, pickleball-specific shoes uh, here. Those are going to, I'm really, really eager to try those out. (laughs) I'm just hoping for them to, uh, you know, 
make their way into my uh, desk, hopefully. Yes. <laughs> I'll nudge someone on my end. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but amazing shoes. K-Swiss makes amazing shoes. Um, Tyrol has specific pickleball shoes. Uh, Acacia as well. Um, it's just, it's again, uh, coming down to pickleball, it's just amazing to see brands that are just dedicating time and effort uh, to being pickleball specific. It's not like, you know, Yes, tennis court shoes work uh, for most players, but there's specific movements that you do at the kitchen line that a pickleball specific shoe is just going to help you uh, maintain that stability a little bit better. Um, so I definitely recommend if you're a hardcore pickleball player, look for a pickleball specific shoe. Um, look out for those case with Skechers, Acacia, Tyrol shoes. Um, there's definitely a shoe out there for you. Um, it's just, you know, with everything, it's the process to find the perfect shoe for you. Yeah, that's awesome. We have some of our customer service representatives learning how to play pickleball and getting addicted to pickleball. And the other day, someone was like, I'm about to play pickleball. What shoes should I get? And I gave her two options, and she ended up picking the K-Swiss. I think it was the Hypercourt, the they're, the yeah. names are slightly different. Hyper pickleball, hypercourt, or it had it's specific for pickleball, and she absolutely loved it and just kept saying it's so squishy underneath and like super comfortable. Yeah. And I was like, yes, I'm so glad like it worked out perfect. And she was like, I'm gonna buy two pairs. Like she loved them. So yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. So uh, amazing with the shoes out there, and uh, I hear uh, big things are coming for next year. Hopefully, uh, with a lot more brands uh, diving into pickleball. Yes, so. it sounds like it. Um, what else? Is there anything else we should be aware of? Anything specific that you are like hoping someone will listen to this podcast and buy you for the holiday season? <laughs> um, no, just uh, a, a couple of things. Uh, again, I uh, mentioned I've been out court for a long time, so I always yes. recommend stay hydrated. Nice. We do have this Selkirk <laughs> a 64 uh, ounce uh, water jug. So stay hydrated. Yes, <laughs> even the we winter love season, hydration. Yes. <laughs> even the winter season, you might feel like the sun's not, you know, uh, it's not as hot outside. But man, when you're out there for about five hours, four hours, uh, you don't have water. You start uh, thinking about, uh, you know, where's the water? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so definitely right. recommend this. And I always go with the largest one. So the 64 ounce is perfect for me. Nice. Um, just fill it up and it stays insulated and cool for me uh, nice. throughout the whole uh, five hours. So hopefully I could uh, continue that trend yeah. for years to come. <laughs> love, love that. I love big water bottles also. So, and yeah, you never know if the club or park or wherever you're playing the random pickleball court by the water, <laughs> like has water or not. So. Yes. I mean, especially here in uh, the Atlanta area towards end up you know when winter starts they'll shut down like the water lines mm. uh, due to the possibility of those lines freezing so you, i've i had that happen to me uh last winter is uh i forgot water um and i went to the water fountain i pressed the button a couple of times and oh, nothing no. came out I was, like, I was like oh no <laughs> <That's> <laughs> i, I want to be out here <laughs> that's the worst feeling <laughs> yeah Oh, Howard, thanks so much for telling us about all these awesome new products and what to be on the lookout for. Where can people find more information about Total Pickleball? Obviously on the website, but plug all the social channels and YouTube and all that. Yeah, yeah. So we're uh, doing more product reviews. Uh, so definitely uh, check us out on YouTube uh, and then uh, Instagram as well. Instagram is more of like our uh, creative, uh, fun videos as uh, if you guys have gotten an opportunity to see a couple of them, uh, there's one that I go for uh, Della Rosa shot, and uh, I end up pegging uh, Andrew. <laughs> the idea nice. for that one was to uh, bypass the ball near the camera lens, but somehow <laughs> the ball was just attracted to his head and uh, ended up just <laughs> smacking him. But yeah, check us out on uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram, TikTok as well. Oh, um, TikTok, you know, okay. and yes. <laughs> um, and if you guys have any like recommendations or things you guys would love to see, um, we're always open for any great idea. Um, you know, we uh, definitely scroll through all those comments and we love when you guys post, uh, you know, add your own flair to uh, what's going on in the pickleball world. Um, you know, just super excited, uh, especially with the web uh, 
videos that we're going to be doing for next year and uh, material that we've worked on uh, here recently uh, that should be out uh, in a month or so. Um, there's some amazing stuff coming out. Um, definitely recommend um, checking us out on YouTube, especially. Nice. Awesome. And the same thing. We'll add all of those links so people can easily access you guys. And hopefully we will see you on another podcast soon. I know for a fact we'll see you on many playtest videos coming up so our audience can get familiar with your beautiful face. And yeah. <laughs> thanks. So, yeah. Thanks so much for joining. And um, what do you say like after a pickleball match? I always say happy hitting with tennis. But like, what do you say for pickleball? Good pickling? Happy pickling. Yeah. There, there's some people <laughs> that, you know, they they just love throwing the word uh, pickling pickle. Uh, you see, uh, next time, you know, they the community is just great. Um, if you haven't given pickleball an opportunity, I 100% recommend it. Um, even if you uh, weren't, you know, never played any sports or anything like that, um, recommend it. It's super easy to pick up, uh, super uh, entertaining and amazing sport. Um, last uh, year I, on the customer service floor, I started our own little pickleball group. And there's maybe like half of them that, you know, um, never played tennis, never played any racket sports, maybe played uh, pickup basketball here and there, but never really dedicated to a sport. And I was able to get them uh, going on the court within 30 minutes. Um, and they just fell in love. And every week they're like, oh, when are we going to play pickleball? When are we going <laughs> to play pickleball? It's coming. It's going to be Tuesdays and Thursdays for oh, us. <laughs> Um, that's also a good plug. I, you know, I don't have a big family, but listeners out there that maybe you're going to your families this holiday season and maybe there's some downtime, every, grab some pickleball gear and like get out to a court. And I think it's like a super fun way to like bring the family together. You know, everyone will have fun. Maybe someone will get pegged. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you burn some calories, get a little cardio. Yep. So yeah, that's a great reminder. Yep easy to play yeah. with anyone even if they've never even picked up a pickleball paddle yeah. or a tennis perfect racket. for perfect for after that thanksgiving meal yes 100 percent. awesome well thank you howard so much for joining me and we are excited to keep up with all the new things coming in 2023 for pickleball yep super awesome. excited thank you next up welcome caleb from running warehouse thank you for joining me today yeah thanks for having me second year in a row so you know Happy to be here. Yes, I was going to say, so since last year, now Caleb and I um, share much closer of a space <laughs> and oh, are yes, able, we're yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah, and we are able to geek out about all things. Um, our normal conversations go from running to tennis to sports to mental health, athletes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything under the athletic sun anything know. everything and anything and then fun fact Caleb his background which I'm gonna have you get into is in the soccer world and you're also coaching soccer this year yeah I got the opportunity to coach the women's soccer team at Cuesta College here locally and you know it's been an interesting uh, transition into college coaching but it's been really fun so far and nice. yeah so as you said I mean I come from a soccer background so that's definitely something I'm very passionate about and have that I can continue that this year. We love that. And then tell me a little bit about your role with Running Warehouse and how long you've been at Running Warehouse. Yeah, so I'm quickly approaching my two-year anniversary with WebC. Um, so I have been a web content editor um, for the past two years and really focus on shoe reviews and content creations. So like articles for our site and stuff like that. And then dive into other projects as need be. Nice. And before we get into trends and products and all that, um, as my listeners might or might not know, I talk about it in a, several episodes. I like to dabble in the running side of things as, um, a way to stay healthy it's like and also a way to decompress and all of that so I am just going to ask my listeners out there and anyone watching if they're interested in a running crossover or like how running can help your tennis game and all of that podcast let us know because Caleb and I are ready for that <laughs> oh yeah I mean I would I would love that option because you know coming from our my background your background we were that kind of transitional athlete as we uh, got more into running and kind of mm -hmm. integrated it into our post-collegiate training. And mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, that's where I'm at right now. I Since uh, we have slightly lower numbers at times at practice, I hop into practice uh, quite frequently. So I'm I'm cross-training every day, and my, my running's been kind of supplementing kind of the extra activity I've been doing this, this past fall. So uh, cross-training's definitely my jam and definitely something that I'm constantly trying to uh, balance, you know, from a health standpoint. Well, and something fun about tennis and soccer is like you do those quick spurts, but you also need the endurance. So it w- I think it's always interesting to talk about how other things can help us get better at the sport that we want to be the best at. Oh, yeah. And I mean, what's been a surprise is just with kind of my decrease in uh, weekly mileage and stuff. It's just having those cross training elements kind of to keep those um, muscles activated. I mean, it's it's actually, I haven't digressed as much as I thought I would in, in certain parts of my running, at least for like speed runs, I've gotten a little more of that kind of kickback that, um, <laughs> that I used to have as a, a younger athlete. But, you know, I, I, I mean, again, kind of creating that full rounded balanced athlete is, is a, a big part of what I do and, um, you know, trying to translate it into better, better running, hopefully. <laughs> right? I know. Yeah. The word fartlek is the term that like the runners will use, but like us tennis players will call them sprints or speed work. Mm-hmm. And like, I, honestly, like I love that kind of training. It's like more bang for your buck, but like mentally, it's so much easier to be like, go hard for 30 seconds and recover. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And we talk about that a lot. As you mentioned, since we're neighbors, we talk about that, you know, kind of that mental reset of just going through something really physically challenging and pushing through that and kind of the the headspace we gain after that because uh, we're semi-addicted to it at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. Okay, um, enough about us. Uh, what kind of trends have you <laughs> what kind of trends have you guys seen this year in the running world? Yeah, so um, You know, last year I talked about carbon plates and carbon plates were exploding everywhere onto the scene and top racers and then starting to kind of trickle down into other categories of running shoes, um, hitting kind of some of the daily trainers and or again, further categories. This year, um, we kind of continue to see that, you know, a lot more carbon plated offerings. We're starting to see more trail carbon plated offerings. We're also um right kind of seeing them being refined and even their racing models so really again repeating myself but refining that technology you know yeah and but really the biggest trend and kind of the hot trend right now is almost this return to foam technologies and um expanding um these midsole foams and these geometries so that uh, people who may not like the, the underfoot experience of a carbon plate can still get a, a comfortable, protective, and yet get that responsiveness from their midsole foam. So um, really this expanse of foam technology, and as I said, kind of this return to or expansion of those offerings um, mm-hmm. highlighted, uh, I'm sure I'll, I'll mention them later. So uh, there's a few shoes that I'm really excited about in that that field. Nice. Before we get into product, I would love for you to explain what exactly a carbon plate would do for a running shoe. Because in tennis, Coco Goff launched her first uh, signature shoe, and it does have a carbon plate. And what I was expecting based on what I've heard the running world talk about, I think was not what it was there for. So I'd love to hear you explain what a carbon plate does for running shoes. Well, you know, uh, it, it depends kind of on which category we're looking at, but um, really with these super critical foams. So if we look at like a Zoom X, it's super bouncy and has this nice um, kind of compression and return. And when it's in a max stack shoe, like an Alpha Fly or those big clunky shoes, sorry, mm-hmm. um, it, they become unstable. So part of part of the integration of a carbon plate was to stabilize some of these um, higher stack shoes with a softer, more responsive foam. But also that carbon plate technology really helps um, make 
uh, the shoe more efficient. And so kind of getting more of that return back as that shoe goes through the heel to toe progression. So as it compresses, that carbon plate can help accentuate that toe off snap or that energy return. And again, really, really keeping you efficient so that you're you're not working as hard to get the same return. And that's why we see them in those top racers of like this highly efficient shoe that they can maintain these high uh, paces for 26.2 miles and further, you know. So it's it's that's really where where the technology has um, kind of begun was really in that stable efficiency design. And right, as I said, it's just that expansion of how do we either make it more forgiving for more of a daily trainer experience while, again, getting that stability element and efficiency element in different categories of shoes. Nice. And that's why I was, uh, you explained that perfectly. I love that. And it aligns exactly with what I was going to say. Um, hearing that carbon plate was in uh, these speedy running shoes, I just assumed like, oh, a carbon plate's going to make me so fast on the tennis court. But similar to what you're saying is it does provide a lot of stability and efficiency in the shoe that it's in because it is in a bit of a bulkier shoe, but the shoe doesn't feel sluggish it's like super responsive like quick to you know move to the next shot so it's cool to see that crossover and we've mentioned this before on the podcast and in other categories but a lot of times we'll see the trends and the foams start on the running world and then a couple years later they trickled into the tennis world so Mm -hmm. i'm excited to hear you talk more about all those new new foams and shapes and all of that good stuff. So what kind of items should we be, ha- what, what should be on our radar this year for shopping, whether it's for ourselves or the runner in our lives? Well, uh, the top ones that you're going to get from me are, again, kind of more of those trainer friendly shoes. Um, I do have aspirations for, you know, races and um, I'm kind of eyeing that alpha fly too, maybe. So um, that's maybe more of my personal splurge buy coming up. Um, uh, but again, kind of diving into those uh, shoe technologies that we've seen kind of expand and really like highlight this year and has produced some really good products. I'm going to pull it up. I'm taking it off right now. But uh, it's this this bad boy right here. It's the Fresh Foam X More V4. Um, You know, I really can use it for anything. It's not a fast shoe, but it's really fun. You know, again, kind of getting that uh, more efficient foam in the sense of I'm getting an energy return besides just sinking in, but still having the stack height to feel really protected. So I can go long, I can go short. Yeah, I'm not going to do a speed day in it. But with my with my load and kind of my cross training elements with soccer, I, I can wear this shoe for everything. And it comes at a pretty good price point for me personally. So I'm I'm really excited about this shoe. I'm I'm talking to everybody about it. I'm trying to get more people in it because I think I think it's just a really good offering. And then along uh, those lines, and I know it's one that you personally love is the Nova Blast. You know, yes. um, Asics. Uh, you know, they're doing a really good job this year. They've had kind of a big year with a lot of different offerings and uh, big releases, and yet. You know, uh, Nova Blast 3 just kind of released and it's it's a hot ticket item. Again, really good protection, but you get this highly versatile foam that you can really wear with any run. And um, we're, we're really seeing those shoes, uh, kind of those versatile, protective, comfortable shoes really kind of take off um, over the last few months. So Nova Blast 3. New Balance, Fresh Foam, uh, X, More V4. Those are kind of my top two right now. And then uh, maybe for a little faster option, the New Balance Rebel uh, V3 just came out. So, you know, uh, that's another one on my radar for maybe those slightly faster runs. Awesome. Uh, Yes, I think I was the first person in the slow warehouse to buy the new Nova Blast shoe. (laughs) Everyone was like, oh, these are up. These are out. You know, like, yes, they are. I've been waiting. Time time (laughs) to put in your orders for sure. Because, yeah, Yeah. I I mean, it's it will continue throughout this holiday season to be a hot ticket item. So if if you're looking to buy for a friend or yourself, I would I would go out there and get get a Nova Blast three or 
my personal favorite, more V4. So yeah, sure. um, I'm pretty sure last year one of your items was a New Balance shoe as well. You just kind of like are aligned with the, what they're well, doing. You know, I'm I'm the New Englander. You know, oh and yeah, <laughs> that Boston-based company. So I get a little you know, nostalgic, and you, you know, I I need to rep a little New Balance here and there. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. What else? Are there any good sales that we should keep an eye on, or like any? Anything in particular that comes to mind? I know we can't always talk about some of the sales and we don't know exactly when this episode's going to air, but what what can you share? You know, we we do have a lot of sales coming up throughout the holiday season. All I'll say is there's the big brands, you know, our Nikes, our New Balances, um, and our Sauconies. We're going to have holiday, uh, um, holiday sales uh, throughout the season, so keep your eye out. There's going to be some really good deals. And then in general, for me, a, a good deal is always uh, kind of, you know, what's uh, still on the rack, so to speak. So I'm, I'm a clearance clearance guy. You know, I, I hit the clearance uh, filter on, on every shopping site and see what um, what was happening. And, and, you know, we have some previous models of some shoes that are really good shoes and they need a good home and they're coming in at a kind of a more wallet friendly price point. So that's, that's really all I can say at this point. But keep your eye out because we, we definitely have some really good options this year as we head into the holidays. So Nice. We we will make sure you're running. <laughs> yes, and I'm even gonna give like a little personal antidote. I always use the wrong ver- version of that <laughs> word. <laughs> and anyways, <laughs> so I just got the new Nova Blast three, right? But I was on Running Warehouse and I saw the Nova Blast two was on clearance and at a really good price. And yes, the new one is awesome and it's a little lighter and the the upper's a little lighter and the the foam's a little squishier and (laughs) responsive but the two was a really good shoe and it's 100% a shoe I will still run in so like for me I'm like ooh, stock up now that's like almost half price like so what Caleb just mentioned is such a good way to shop too especially if you're buying for yourself right and I, I I can be a little more specific you gave a you gave a good example there with the Nova Blast uh, two. Um, we have the Rebel V two. Um, I think I think really the also the bigger um, uh, options at, in that kind of affordable price bracket will be like the Brooks Ghost um, is also going to be kind of the Brooks fourteen is going to be available at a cheaper price point hopefully um, this holiday season. So that again. Brooks Ghost is one of the most popular um, in our in the whole running shoe industry. So it's a really time tested, time true um, shoe. So if, if it's if it's at a discount, I would say go out and get it. Stock up, <laughs> yes. Um, a lot of people turn to running to stay in shape, especially during the holiday season. It's like you can go run a quick three miles before you sit down for that big meal and you don't, you know, you feel okay <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and all that. So um, do you guys have, I, you're wearing one in particular, but there's always some fun holiday like pieces, outfits, shorts, shoes even. What do you have uh, at Running Warehouse that can kind of make your fun, your runs a little more fun? Well, um, again, I think we mentioned it last year, but you know, there's there's the signature kind of personality brands that like to get a little more funky with their styles. Yeah, so Boa will have their holiday selections, I'm sure. This one that you highlighted today is from Rabbit. This is um, their long sleeve holiday tee. Um, I really like it. It's super soft. You know, I'm a Rabbit fan for that kind of comfort based, uh, athleisure esque. Um, type of apparel but uh yeah keep your eye out for also uh some potential brooks holiday offerings um you know really if you're looking to have some fun it's always boa boa yeah those fun designs that really <laughs> make shorts. you stand out or yeah. right you know this could go to any holiday party and you'd fit right in so totally um I, I would say definitely get this one. It's super soft and comfortable. <laughs> nice. And then what about even transitioning into running in the winter? I know we're in California and like it's so cold at like 60 degrees today. 
But right. what are some things that maybe someone that maybe just wants to start running and it's the holiday season, so maybe it's a little cold, it's a little dark. What kind of items should they be on the lookout to add to their run for winter running? Yeah, I mean, um, we I highlighted it and I, this might become my personal PSA whenever I'm given the opportunity to speak about it. But, you know, we, we hit the winter um, months, it gets darker sooner. So... And right, it gets chilly. So finding a jacket that has um, kind of that breathability, but also can keep your warmth while also keeping you visible. That's kind of the big one for me is making sure that, I mean, we're leaving work five, six o'clock. We're kind of leaving work either as the sun's going down, we're hitting our runs in the dark. Make sure you're visible so you can stay safe. Um, But yeah. We have a lot of base layer options that have recently released, um, lots of tight options, but keep yourself warm. You know, don't be afraid to kind of pile it on if you if you ever have to take something off mid run, you know, that so maybe even looking at a pack as well for your bigger run so you can kind of take off or or replace on different items depending on the weather conditions, but get your base layers. Protect yourself from adverse weather if you're in New England or the Northeast, you know, hometown. Make sure you have something to protect you against the snow if you get wet. And then on top of the cold, you know, that makes for a really unpleasant run. So get something that will protect you from that that water and make sure to keep in the heat so you can enjoy your run and stay visible. And more power to you guys if you're running in snow and rain and cold because Mm -hmm. I get soft when it hits 45 degrees. (laughs) Yeah, you know, we had practice in the rain the other day and I've never seen a group less less happy to be in a (laughs) a warmer weather rain. And I I reflected because I saw some games from uh, my alma mater and they're playing in 40 degree hail, wet, rainy games and I'm like yeah that was my every day so <laughs> I, I was a little nostalgic the other day I actually appreciated the 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 rain the wet practice so to speak that's funny <laughs> um what else what about trends in apparel what have you guys seen what are you seeing come for 2023 talk to me about apparel trends well you know um we have the usual apparel we have the expanse of offerings of highly technical uh, down to more of that athleisure. I would say in general, we've kind of seen an expansion of that. Even Rabbit itself, you see their kind of flannel op- uh, offerings now. So really that crossover element of this can be used on your run, but it'll also function as a t-shirt or a shirt for work. Or again, for me, I I'm always looking for that item that I can wear into the office and then um, hit practice with without any difficulties. So I think we've really seen an expansion of, again, those crossover um, athletic wear, casual wear um, in the realms of like Rabbit, Viore, um, and then even uh, like John G as well. Just really kind of those... We have our highly technical for that runner, and then we have our more comfort-based crossover elements that also you can wear casually and, and feel stylish and, and again, kind of rock your, rock your brand, so to speak. Nice. Yeah. Um, what else? Is there anything else we should be aware of? And I always wonder because, you know, the new year comes and everyone kind of, like, does their whole, like, I'm going to do this in the next year. And... Even I remember last year I did a bit of a run challenge in December and I'm always like, hmm, I wonder if my friends at Running Warehouse are doing any challenges or anything. Are you guys planning anything or is there anything coming up or should we start one now? (laughs) Yeah, I think we should start one. To be honest, um, we're, we're heading into that time. New Year's resolutions are coming out. So I think if we created one personally for the office, that would be really fun. Um, I know, again, with that new year, people are starting to pick out their races, you know? So um, I've been talking to a lot of people. So they're they're like, hey, I'm I'm doing a marathon in in a couple months, in three months, you know? Like, so this is the time where I start seeing people kind of prep for their challenge, so to speak. But I always, I'm always down for a nice holiday challenge, especially with all the 
the richness of foods coming up. Like I need, I need that extra motivation right now to uh, kind of keep grinding. And soccer's about to end, so I'm about to, you know, up my mileage and try to hit some personal goals, personal races um, this spring. So no specific challenge, but always, always down for a good challenge. <laughs> I like putting up the the Nike. Uh, run a club app and I'll do the like December 100k challenge but I think we should come up with one more creative uh for our team here or maybe yeah. the broad running group so definitely we have to do that I did the three for 31 last year with Peloton actually and it was nice. just three miles a day um mm -hmm. I did some days it was two mile run one mile walk some days it was five mile run you know like you can split it up but it's nice to like make sure you give yourself that like 30 minutes or however long it takes you it doesn't matter how long it takes you but give yourself that time to just like also be away from the world <laughs> and yeah just kinda, yeah <laughs> hey headspace is key we we know that so I think personally if I if I had a, a fun challenge slash goal and I've seen it done in from different influencers and stuff like that but the run every day um for 2023 would be really cool um, oh cool I, I think, again, and what defines that run, uh, it will be broad. But yeah. just to to allow that space in my day to to get a run in, to be kind of in my in my own element um, and, again, kind of, you know, resetting or or getting my energies right for the rest of the day. So I, I that's a personal goal of kind of I would like to have for 2023. I love that. And if anyone's listening and is interested in, in sharing their goals, because I know we have some very talented listeners um, that are athletes of all kinds listening to Talk Tennis. So please share with us and feel free to email and comment. And we would love to hear what you guys are working on and all of that, because as you can see, we're both very like goal oriented <laughs> oh, <laughs> kinds yeah. of people. Oh, yeah. Um, well, yeah. With a, with a full, full um, spectrum view. Of wanting, yes. wanting health and happiness, you know, uh, health and mm -hmm. happiness, of course. And also, if you guys want to dive deeper into running shoes, and Caleb is a great person that can talk you through what kind of running shoes might be best for you. So that also can be another potential episode for 2023. Because as a shoe geek myself, it's always fun to continue to learn about other categories and see the trends and all that. So Awesome. Yeah, and as you said, you see them on your side, so it's it's fun to see how those uh, those different sports kind of integrate with themselves, even on a technology side, and kind of what we're providing for these athletes um, in their different sports, and and right again how they relate. So always always happy to join the podcast. You know, yay. Me. <laughs> okay, um, plug Running Warehouse. Where should people come check out Running Warehouse aside from RunningWarehouse dot com? <laughs> Besides runningwarehouse.com, I mean that's the that's the best place. But you know we have <laughs> all of our social media outlets: um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We're constantly hitting those um, outlets to give you the best updates on new gear, the best updates on shoe technologies, and again, kind of keep your eye out for those uh, holiday sales. Um, they will be. Uh, post it all over and we'll have links to all of our best gear and our our holiday gift guides so keep your eyes out awesome well thanks caleb for joining as always and uh thank you thank you we appreciate your expert knowledge and point of view thank you michelle and happy holidays happy holidays <laughs> let's go run <laughs> <laughs> thanks michelle Next up, we have Alicia with us from Riding Warehouse. Welcome. Thank you for joining me for this gift guide. Yeah, of course. Happy to be here. Could you just give our listeners and viewers a little bit of a background with your role at the at the Riding Warehouse? <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your role with Riding Warehouse and how long have you been with the company? Um, so I am the general manager at Riding Warehouse. Basically, my job is to do everything related to the customer. So customer service, web content development, marketing, anything that relates to you and how we can help you. That's my job. Um, I've been in the role for a couple of years and I've been with the company for 
a, a while, <laughs> eight years. I don't know. I, I stopped counting after five. <laughs> I, I know. I was just like referencing my time at Sports Warehouse or Tenants Warehouse. And I was saying a certain number. And then I was like, oh, dang, I'm actually like past that. So <laughs> like, oh, time wait. flies. Yeah. Oh, and yes. I feel like hopefully like all of us are aging gracefully because everyone still looks the same. <laughs> yes. That's what that means for sure. <laughs> Perfect. Um, well, and if our listeners listen to last year's episode, Writing Warehouse has some of the fun stuff, in my opinion, because I have a little bit of a Western vibe when it comes to shoes or boots more or less. And um, yeah, you guys have some awesome stuff. So I'm excited to get into it. I actually recently bought a pair of boots from you guys. Ooh. Yes, obsessed. Thursday is boot Thursday. So I'll wear Love them. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get into product, what kind of trends are you guys seeing this year? Has anything changed in the equestrian world? Is there anything new going on? Honestly, everything is holding pretty steady on our end. Um, we're seeing a lot of like from like the apparel stand, a lot of it is pulling in pretty similarly as it did to last year. So in terms of like the holiday gifts and stuff, we always have the horse stuff and of uh, the rider stuff. And then for the non-rider, we got you covered also because it's a lot of just like the cute little fluffy things. So, <laughs> yes. you know, it's all inclusive. <laughs> we love our horse people, but we can span past the horse people also. Awesome. So let's get it going. I feel like you probably have some items to share with us. What's some of your favorite stuff? What are you recommending as gifts this year? Feel free to break it into categories. You do you. Okay. So I guess, like I said, we have, I have a lot of props here. Um, I'm wearing one of my props. Yes. I um, love that. I love that color. I love the little pattern. Ugh, it's so cute. So cute. Um, the bummer about my office is that um, through this window here is the web content office, which means I see all of the new product that's just showing up. So this just got pulled right off the rack and I might not be giving it back. <laughs> I love so it. we have some new arrivals from Cinch, all the fluffy things. Um, the nice part about all of this stuff is that it is truly made for um, the horse rider. Um, so it's going to be super durable, but from like a comfort stand, um, there's also that element as well. So this is going to be one of them. It's a little like snap button, super cute. Um, the other thing that came from Cinch that we have that's super fluffy is this full zip. Um, the cute little Aztec pattern. It is so soft. It's like wearing a blanket, but like it's a cute blanket. So <laughs> you just can't go wrong with that. The other ones that are a little bit more durable on the fashion side, we got a bunch of new stuff from Outback also in the jacket front. So um, this is going to be one of them as well. It's a nice green color. Oh, the lighting is so weird in here. Oh, there it goes. Going to be super durable, nice waterproof jacket for those people that are looking for like kind of the outdoorsy sort of a deal. Um, Ariat is another popular one that we have. They do a lot of like the nice like outerwear stuff makes for great gifts for horse people and non-horse people. Um, I definitely tackle my parents and they're not necessarily the horse <laughs> people, but they do love the stuff. Bunch of hats, the Charlie One hats and stuff that we have. A bunch of inventory on those. So those are super cute. Um, they ship flat rate for $8.95 for you. So super easy. They come in a great box. You actually could just gift wrap that box. Oh, yeah. Um, even better. Easy. I have to say real quick, too, the WTA finals this year got moved to Dallas, Texas, and Ooh. all of the top female players went uh, hat shopping and boot shopping. <laughs> so this is the crossover that we needed in our there lives. There you go. <laughs> We've got it all figured out, you guys. Okay, so they have we have a bunch of new boots from Ariat also. Um, they're more of like those fashion-y style boots. Um, I have a pair of these, I think. <laughs> we, I know Michelle's got a pair. Our whole office has got a pair. I got We got to share this like boot Thursday thing. So I think yeah, it needs Thursdays. to be like a full company thing. <laughs> I'll send an email. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, those on the attachment of the Ariat footwear thing. Um, you guys, Ariat did slippers last year and then Ooh. they blew up. So now we have slippers galore. It's like women's, <laughs> men's, kids' slippers. They're so cute. Okay. And they're so comfortable. Oh my gosh. So square toed slipper. It's like your boot, but for your home. Um, these ones, the little leopard with like the slip slip on slippers so cute. super comfy um little aztec western print booties oh, i have these from last year um i love them they're <laughs> so amazing 
That's like such a great item too. I every year will buy my mom and my sister a pair of like slippers. And I know that's so silly, but like that's I'm I this is bad for my wallet because I'm going shopping at Riding Warehouse. Hey man, you know, we got you covered. Okay. We're just trying to make sure everyone's covered for the holidays here. (laughs) I won't even have to leave the building this year. This is great. See, that's how it works. It's it's kind of a problem. And then when you work for the company. It's like one thing for me, one thing for my mom, one thing for me, one thing right? for my dad. One thing. Yeah. <laughs> it just like goes exactly. on forever. I know. Um, the thing that we're super excited about for this year that's actually brand new brand wise for Riding Warehouse um, is going to be the STS stuff. Um, super popular in the Western world. Um, definitely kind of like a multi, again, it kind of for those people going to Dallas and things like that. We got you covered with it. It's bags, handbags, purses. Oh, I can't have enough purses, you know, Um, so they're super cute, high quality leather bags. So there's going to be like this one. Um, It goes on, you guys. And there's not even we're still getting new inventory. Some of the cowhide bags, some crossbodies, wallets. We've got the men in your life covered a little billfold. Um, those ones come. And then, of course, we always have a bunch of stocking stuffers too. right. Your horse is covered with the treats. Um, and some of those other small little items for your horse, cause you can't forget your horse. Um, but then for, um, stocking stuffers in your home as well, we do a bunch of the gray horse candles, um, all 100% soy candles. They burn really well. Um, and they smell fabulous. We have a couple new scents for the holiday, um, along with our main ones that we carry all year long. And then this is just cute. Katie is actually the one that showed me these. And I was like, okay, maybe I need these for my home. They're cute little horse head of salt and pepper shakers. Oh my gosh. I love that. (laughs) They're so cute. So that's my show and tell. Yes. Um, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to own everything that's currently (laughs) sitting in my office, which is kind of a problem, but, um, now, now you guys know where I'm at, yeah. where we have all of our things. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you for sharing all of those items. Like seriously, that it's such an easy crossover too. And like Western styles, I don't know, maybe it's where we live, but I feel like it's so trendy and like the patterns and everything. Yeah. So that's exciting. I literally, I'm glad I don't have access to your guys's um, point of sales because I would just be <laughs> creating an order right now. But um, what else? Can you talk to me a little bit about some of the content you guys have been working on this year and what we can expect to see from your channels in 2023? Oh, 2023 is going to be kind of a beast, honestly. Like we have a lot in play. There's a lot that we don't have planned out yet, but we have some ideas on the ground. Um, content wise, we're really hoping to kind of delve further into um, some of like those educational pieces that you guys are recommending, um, some tax stuff. We always try to keep everyone in the know on the new apparel that we have, which goes with the trends, um, whether you're a horse person, not a horse person, spanning the English Western endurance discipline, we got you covered. So um, we've been kind of collecting some ideas throughout 2022, and hopefully we're planning on kind of making sure that we make that happen in 2023. That's awesome. And then talk to me a little bit about your social channels and where people can find you. I think, don't tell the other companies, but I think that Riding Warehouse's TikTok game is Oof. above and beyond <laughs> right now. You guys, the TikTok thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, right now, you can find us on Instagram, um, Facebook, and um, like Michelle mentioned, on TikTok <laughs> as well. Um, it's good. All of it's you, good. Uh, horse people and those little cute horse videos, even if you just like horses as a general element, we got you covered. Um, on all three of those platforms. Nice. And are there you guys having any special sales or deals that you can talk about? I know a lot of times we have to keep it pretty under wraps on what's going on sale, but any 12 days or any special things to be aware of? I feel like I say this every year, um, but we do our big Black Friday sale. And every year it is truly 100% the biggest sale of the year. And this year will truly not disappoint. It's going to be huge. (laughs) I can't say much more than that because we're kind of trying to keep it under wraps a little bit. But definitely check back in. It's come Black Friday. Um, That'll run through the weekend for sure. And it is truly going to be the biggest sale. Um, of the year. We'll have some other promotions running in December. Again, you'll have to come back and visit us because it's going to be under wraps for now, but 
we got you covered for the holidays. Anything you need, anyone on your list, we got it. Awesome. And definitely sign up for that mailing list because I know you guys are probably mailing on all those great deals too. And it's always like an easy reminder like, oh, I got to see what they've got today. So exactly. Cool. Well, that was super fun. And I can't wait to go shopping later today. Thank you for joining us, Alicia. And that's it. Anything else to add on your end? Nope, I think we've got you've got us all kind of covered. If you guys are running into any issues, the gift guide should be out shortly. So um, if you have any questions or anything on that, um, our customer service team is always happy to help. They're a bunch of horse people. We would love talking to horse people, non-horse people, buying presents for horse people, whatever the case is, they're happy to help and they got you covered. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. And we will start our shopping at ridingwarehouse.com. All right. Thanks for having me, Michelle. Joining me now is one of our favorite sister companies, Tackle Warehouse. Corey from Tackle Warehouse, thanks for joining Talk Tennis and talking about all things tackle with us on our podcast. Thanks for having us. How are you doing? Uh, We are awesome, and I am so stoked to hear about what's new in the tackle world in 2022. But before we jump into that, will you just give everyone that's listening and watching a rundown of what you actually do at Tackle Warehouse and how long you've been with the company? Uh, I I oversee the marketing and the video side of stuff, uh, kind of both sides of that. I've been with Tackle since we've started back in 2002. We went online in 03, but I've been there since 2002 and kind of you know, I wear a lot of hats. The main stuff is, is doing the video and the marketing side of stuff and kind of overseeing everything underneath that. Nice. And tell me a little bit about your background in the tackle world, because I know you're like out in it. You're one of them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, growing up, I mean, I it was I didn't go to school for it or for business and anything like that. But, uh, you know, now I'm out and about. And on the video side, I go out and go to some events and do a lot of filming out there and hang out with the pros and get to mingle with those guys and that and that's pretty cool um I, I don't fish as much of the tournaments as i used to anymore i think like a lot of industry is not some but the more you get into the industry uh the less i get to spend doing i'm here for i love the sport that's what i'm here for but i work do more working than i get to do actually recreational it seems like more and more these days unfortunately i hear ya. Okay, so what is going on with you guys in 2022? In tennis, we saw a lot of issues with supply chain demands um, in the first half, and now we're finally caught up. (laughs) And (laughs) um, we have inventory, thankfully, for the holidays. How has it been in the tackle world, and what's been going on for your year? Yeah, I think it's it's been near the same. I think cross, you know, for us and just really everyone, you know, and we 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 do have inventory now. We're we're starting to get. Uh, stuff cut up and, and you know we have our Georgia location that's been going for a while now and that's really kind of starting to pick up and, and take off a lot of the load uh, but we, we're definitely starting to see where companies are starting to pick up and honestly seeing some of uh, the reverse where there's because everything was so big you know the last uh, in 2020 a lot of other stores are starting to slow down and they're canceling a lot of their orders and now there's a lot of vendors that have surplus of products and have and looking for somewhere to go so that's my it's a good thing for us because hopefully we can take advantage of that and get some good deals for our customers coming forward uh well by time this airs there'll be some new stuff coming out uh at really good prices hopefully yeah i keep joke yeah i keep joking it's a buyer's market at least at tennis yeah, warehouse yeah, sure. as well <laughs> yeah so um also did you guys see an uptick in people new to your sport and are they still enjoying what tackle and fishing has to offer them yeah we definitely saw a big uptick in uh and new customers I mean, there'd be some days it was like one day in particular we were looking at it and 60 percent of the customers that shop were all new which, wow that's awesome and uh, and we're maintaining a lot of that, of that new customer base but you know and probably a lot of the new customer base people didn't fish a ton before so even though now they're still in the sport they're not the the type of guy that definitely goes out every weekend and stuff like that but like anything, those guys that get that bug, they more and more of them get the bug worse, and they turn to those guys that go out every weekend or more and more than just twice a year. They're, they become, you know, hardcore fishermen. Like people that were just casual fishermen are now are getting into it pretty hardcore. So it's cool to see that the lakes are, you know, full. They're still, they're still, I, I don't say over impacted, but there, there's a lot of pressure on the lakes right now because so many guys are wanting to get outdoors and, and still fish. That's awesome. Now, what are some of your favorite items right now? What would you put on a gift guide? Tell me about what we should be shopping for, for the tackle people in our lives. You know, I guess 
alluding to what I was talking about, some of the pressure, I guess, that the lakes are getting, one trend you're seeing a lot is, in general, is finesse techniques. And that's just because the fish are seeing, seeing more and more stuff. And so when we, with finesse stuff, you got lighter line, usually smaller baits, just to try to get those finicky fish that are seeing a lot of baits, A, something different and just different techniques. And not just, uh, you know, baits, but it's like this one here is a small little little minnow bait. And one of the new techniques is called hover strolling. And certain times of year, those fish will uh, suspend. And those fish are historically hard to catch. So but this, the way this bait's presented, you have to have a specific hook for it. So it comes out the eye here and weight it. So it presents the bait very horizontal. And it's something just different the fish haven't seen. It's, it's big in Japan. It's been there for a while. A lot of guys here have been keeping it kind of a secret. But now it's become more and more normalized and more of a finesse technique, finesse technique that uh, a lot of guys are catching on to. It's a great way to catch, you know, finicky fish or just uh, if you have lakes highly, pr highly pressured, just something that's different that guys haven't seen. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and I assume because you guys operate very similar to us, do you guys have some like how to videos on how people can maybe learn further about these techniques and get into mm -hmm. it? Yeah, we actually just released a, a video on how to set up the hover stroll. It doesn't go a ton of details on how to fish it, but it kind of glasses over it. That's one thing we're working on, too, is, okay, now here, here's how you rig it, and then coming up, I'll have a video kind of more in-depth on on how to fish it. Awesome. We love that. What and, else? You know, I guess the other other extreme on the, the new end, too, is, I guess, big swim baits. And, and we have – this is an exclusive bait that we have with depths, and it's we worked with uh, Butch Brown, who's one of the the, the gods of, of swim bait fishing, to come up with this color of this bait, and we get, got some video – with him talking about this bait specifically, this color, and then kind of how to fish it, how he goes about it. Uh, and that was pretty neat getting to A, just like I got to meet the guy and, and spend some time with him, but also learn from the master like how to do this. So this this color here is an exclusive bait to Taco Warehouse. Uh, another kind of in that same genre uh, is the Sneaky Pete, and it's another big swim bait again. This is the Taco Warehouse exclusive uh, color light trout and I mean, anywhere in California, a lot of areas, trout's very popular. This is kind of colors been missing. But from the same brand, I don't know if you follow MMA much, but there's a Clay Guida. Is yes. a, and he was here recently with us. And he was a, he's a hardcore fish head. And, and he came out with some exclusive colors in that sneaky pizza. He's got this little guy here, a citrus shad, and then his sexy shad. But he came by here and filmed a really neat video, which you guys should check out, with uh, A-Train and him. And they kind of played off the whole MMA thing, kind of like head to head, you know. Uh, and it was a really cool video just to, to, to watch. And these are really cool baits that, that they came out with too. So it's it's I, I checked that video out as well. Yeah, I just saw that video and it was pretty funny. And I will <laughs> definitely add that link in the show notes. Um, Tackle Warehouse always pulls off some funny stuff. Maybe maybe they might be a little funnier than we are on our on their YouTube, but um, that's awesome. What about sales? I know you guys are going to have some amazing deals. Is there anything specific that our listeners should keep an eye out for? You know, I guess going back to I said those the surplus or products from some of those vendors, we're going to have a, a lot of stuff on sale in general. So I would just keep an eye on the sale page, but it, specifically good deals like rods and reels. You know, we're going to get a lot of closeouts on some rods and reels, and there's already some out there now. So even watching it, check out the, the clearance section. And, and I would eyeball some of those rods and reels, some really good deals on some stuff. And then we've got uh, our 12 days of sales savings coming up, yeah. and those de deals are even better. So uh, the 12 days of savings will start on December, let me make sure I got the right date here, December 7th. So on the okay. 7th, that, that'll kick off, and that's going to be 30 to 70% off. Uh, so some screaming deals on some really good rod and reel combos and baits and tackle and stuff like that too. But it seems like a lot of guys are really shopped that sale to get those the rods and rod and reel deals. And we're gonna have a lot more than we have in the past. So I would definitely check that out. So awesome. And then you guys always have really cool tackle warehouse branded things like hats and t-shirts. Did you guys get any refresh on tackle gear this year? We did one. I went I meant to go grab one, but they're actually still all in the in the the Overstock. We got some new backpacks in, a couple other other new bags. But the big the backpack's a big seller for us. Um, we just got a refresh of that in, and a couple other bags, and and not a lot of tweaks, just kind of real more upgrades, just to kind of fix. We customers, you know, said, hey, we like this, we don't like this, 
and we try to make some changes to address what they like and kind of improve each year. The backpack, you know, every one or two years, we refresh it and make it better. And this year's, I think it's one of our best ones, and it's going to hold up, and it's, it's a great backpack for kids to use for school, but for shore anglers or guys jumping on their friend's boat just to take everything with them and put it in their bag and good to go. Uh, we, we do have a new holiday shirt. I got nice. one here, actually. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Nice. Oh, but that's awesome. Not, yeah. <laughs> It's not like too crispy holiday themed, but a little more yeah. so you can wear kind of year round. And it's it's neat just kind of having. So that's a new one for us. But uh, I definitely check that out. And in general, just, you know, I'm a, I'm a tackle junkie. So I like new yes. stuff. And But we get so much new stuff in, I can't keep up. So right? I, I, even myself, we have a What's New TW and mm-hmm. we have a new items page. So if, if, if you're like me, you just want to see the new stuff, check out What's New TW. Every week we roll out all the new stuff. That's at least the newest, the hottest stuff. And then for everything else, check out the new, the new items page. And we we literally get something in new every day. So it's just it's impossible to keep up with unless you're checking that stuff out. That's amazing. Um, what about 2023? Is there anything that you have your eyes on that you can talk about or anything that people should be looking forward to? What's what's happening in the new year? Uh, you know, the, like I said, the, the, the warehouse is getting up and going on that end. We're working on trying to get things more going out there in Georgia. You know, our 12 days of sa- saving sale starts in December, but it goes all the way through into the, the new year. There's some stuff that I, I thought I'd be able to talk about, but apparently <laughs> we're not. It's not official. Okay. But okay. let's just say we're, we're working on a giveaway that's going to be hands down the largest giveaway we've ever done. What? And uh, we'll be announcing it soon as soon as I get word from – we got – Legal. We got as soon as the lawyers get involved, it's, it's big enough that we have to get lawyers involved. Let's just say wow. that. So it's a, a massive giveaway we're trying to do, but we're, we got to work out a lot of details. And until we have it worked out, we really can't, you know, say too much about it. I guess, but it's it's coming, and you, you're going to want to enter the giveaway. Yeah, I was going to say. I think I I've heard a little bit maybe about this. I think <laughs> unless I'm making it up in my head, I'm like I need this in my life, but I also need something else for it. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> I I might need to learn how to fish first, but what else? Anything else to add? I mean, you just covered it so fluidly. That's awesome. We're very excited to go I shopping. Mean, I, I, I guess I think one thing we, we talked about last year was a, uh, what was a big splurge item. And honestly, yes. I think it might have been this, the same splurge item as last year. I have to go back and watch the video, but it's uh, live scope. And, and what that really is, is, uh, you know, Think of an ultrasound. And that's basically what it is. It's a, it's be able to watch the fish in, in real time. You can see them in the cover, behind the cover, and you can see your lure coming down and how they react or not react to the lure. And so it's, it's real time, like video game style feedback. Um, and it's really taken over for a lot of like the, the big tournaments. That, like certain events, you can't win unless you have it or you, you need to, if you want to be competitive, you have to have it. And it's not cheap. I mean, you're looking at $1,200 just for the transducer, but then you still have to have the right graph or fish finder to work with it. And that's $1,500 to $6,000. So, uh, you know, you look at at least three grand just to get into it. So it's really cool tech, you know, technology, but it's it's not cheap, but it's definitely something that uh, it's once you get into it, a lot of guys are hooked and that's all they do. It's like video game fishing. It's, It's to the next level though. I love that. Um, if you guys get bonuses and you're just looking to treat yourself, <laughs> this sounds like a great way. I mean, like everyone kind of has their eye on something fancy. Like it's okay. Mm. We've, you deserve it. You've worked hard yeah. this year. <laughs> I keep telling myself that. Yeah. Right. Have you gotten one yet? I have it. You know, I, I eyeball the problem though is I look at that. Then like, well, I got to upgrade this graph. So next thing you know, I'm looking at four <laughs> graphs. So four units times 15 to $6,000. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of money. <laughs> it's an investment, yeah. that's for sure. Hopefully, but Santa Claus will get it for me. We'll see. Yeah, we always talk about in tennis, like controlling what you can control and making sure that you have the best experience out there. So this is something where you can completely control it and have an amazing yeah. experience. <laughs> I'm it's just trying to sell it. sell you and everyone else. <laughs> Uh, (laughs) that's awesome you guys always do such a great job so plug your website plug your social channels where can people follow along with tackle warehouse yeah we were you know we're across all the the social channels is tackle warehouse or tackle warehouse underscore or tackle underscore warehouse for most of it's tackle warehouse um and youtube facebook instagram all that stuff we got tiktok snapchat 
um, and we got it all. And uh, we, you know, the YouTube channel is big for us, especially like I said, those what's news at TWs and all their videos we have coming out. We're gonna we're, we're working hard to have more how-to type content coming out. So keep an eye out for that both on the video side and also on, on the written side. Um, and make sure to check out our holiday gift guide. We just posted that today. If you're new into fishing or if you just have a family member who's into it and you need somewhere to start, uh, check out that gift guide. And then uh, by the time this video airs, I think it'll be up before December, but uh, starting December 1st, we're gonna have 10% off gift cards. So that's nice. a great gift. Uh, you know, for family and anyone in my family, if you're listening, uh, go ahead and get me a couple of those gift cards. I need to buy some <laughs> one of those uh, those LifeScope units. So please send money my way. <laughs> yeah, start buying now. I love that. I am also um, one of those people that have bought myself a gift card because the gift cards go on sale and you never know when you're going to need it. So I love that as yeah. a gift. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Corey, so much for joining. Everyone go check out Tackle Warehouse and then come back to Tennis Warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> or Happy stay there. Yeah, or stay there. It's fine. You can do both. Happy holidays from Tennis and Tackle Warehouse. Thanks a lot, Michelle. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of Talk Tennis. And thanks for checking out our sister companies. Like I said, it's always fun to connect with these guys. They're super passionate about their sports, as you can see. And if you have any questions whatsoever about their websites or Tennis Warehouse, you know you can always reach us at podcast at tennis-warehouse.com. Wishing you guys the happiest holidays from our sports warehouse family to yours. And of course, happy hitting.